Hey guys, McSan here, and E3 has come and gone, sadly. Sadly. So I figured, you know, the press conferences are over, shows are over, whatever. So why not give my thoughts on all the press conference here. Now, uh, this will be a two-part video here. I will be discussing three conferences. Actually, it's the UB, there's Ubisoft, yeah, it's just the three three conferences. I did not see the Devolver D Digital one from what I've heard. It's just a bunch of guys playing retro games from like that and the PC game gaming conference. Oh my god, that literally bored me. And that that's saying something really. So I'm gonna start with the first in order here. So it's gonna be EA, Microsoft, and Bethesda. I think that was the order. Okay, let's. For EA, well, first of all, let me just say that this one here was this entire conference. Actually, the all the press conference was pretty lackluster, really. I mean, there was some cool stuff shown, but it was quite clear, especially when you go to Sony, that there really wasn't a sense of competition. I mean, the only one who really went all out was Microsoft, and for good reason. I mean, Sony didn't have didn't have to really put that much effort into it because they are doing so damn well right now the the PS4 has sold over 6 60 60 point 4 million copies they're great they're great so they didn't really have to put that much effort into this sadly which is a disappointment but I'm uh, going to EA uh EA sadly it's mm, uh, they opened it up, they was focused a lot more on the sports side of things and a couple of racings. I do not like sports games. In fact, I hate sports games and I'm not a fan of racing games. I just never got into them unless they're part of something else. Like, But that's neither here or there. There, it was just, it was boring. They had some guy, a YouTuber, never heard of him. Yeah, it was just nothing really. But however, they did show a teaser for Anthem, Bioware's new IP, and of course they had to do this freaking Star Wars Battlefront Two. They were the only ones to show any Battlefront anything, including gameplay of a multiplayer match. Which throughout that entire match, I've been asking one thing: Will the Vulture Droid? be able to turn into its walker configuration would it do that but they i never seen it on the screen it, the old time you cut to the vulture droid it never transformed which i don't know what that that really really has me worried there because you know if, if i'm piloting a supposed fighter that can turn into a little walker in canon i want to be able to do that well, they also also announced for Battlefield 1 fans, which I am actually considering getting, surprisingly, mainly because the World War 1 theme really interests me, something new. Anyhow, they announced an expansion called... about the Tsar? In the name of the Tsar, I believe, which has even the Woman's Battalion. Well, it looks fun. People are gonna know. People are gonna be happy for that. Uh, there we go. Uh, other than that, what else did they? Ha I just saw the re, re saw those conferences, and it just shows that EA didn't really match. Oh, that's right. I, I can't forget. They also have the new game, a new IP called A Way Out. Interesting premise here. You're two prisoners working your way out, and you gotta play with a co-op friend, and it's it's all on split screen, even when online, when not online with another guy. Uh, that has me worried though, because split screen is was never really my forte. I was, I, it's one of those things where information overload for me. I can't decide. I can't really focus on one side. I'd like to take in the entire screen. So I'm curious to know how they handle that. People like me who just can't play split screen because I just they can't take the the contract conflict of information and everything it's just it's so hard uh, so 
Yeah, I mean, the fact is that EA focused a lot more on sports and racing. It was just, it wasn't that strong for me. It wasn't that strong. Which that completely changes when we get to freaking Microsoft. And my God, they just, okay, they, they, they did smart here. They opened the conference unveiling what Project Scorpio was. And it was basically their answer to the PS4 Pro, their response to it. Where it was a new Xbox One count console, a much slimmer version of the slim ver of the slim console called Xbox One X. You know, much like how the Kinect was once called the Natal, the product name has just a lot, it's a lot cooler than the freaking than the public name. So you know, I'm just gonna keep calling it the Scorpio because it just sounds so cooler. But yeah, the Scorpio, it was basically Xbox, uh, Microsoft, like, step into 4K gaming, which, I don't see a point for that, I mean, at this point, I mean, I don't have a 4K TV, not a lot of people have a 4K TV, and I don't have the money, I mean, this, they, they price this thing at $500, Okay, I don't have a PS4 Pro. I still got the original, like, original Xbox One. Not the Xbox One S, which I should get. I should upgrade and get smaller because I'm, my space is a limit, limit here. So I should focus on that. But I'm not going to buy the like, 500 bucks. I'm not going to do that. I'm going to wait for a freaking price drop. And I'm not going to have a 4K TV anytime soon. Not until they get smaller and the prices go down as well. So... So this is really not something that people will go out to get. I mean, this won't, this will not like increase their revenue or anything like that. I don't see that many people, if at all, like only the very rich people who have the kind of cash will go out and upgrade to the Xbox One X day one or even, even year one or year one in this case. No one's going to buy that within a year or even two years. They're going to wait like myself for a price drop. Uh, but other than that, they just went into the games, and my god, they, they, okay, they already announced 40 games on the Xbox, on the Xbox One, and 22 of which are exclusive. Now, the question is, of those 22 exclusives, which one are AAA titles? I mean, we've got some cool shit, like, we saw freaking Crackdown 3 with, uh, freaking Terry Crews. <laughs> that was awesome! You know what? I miss those days in, like, the 90s of Command & Conquer, when they had these live action scenes, cutscenes, with like the show story. Uh, you know what? Yeah, I, want to, he, I want Terry Crews as well. Like, fully in the full on, like, uh, agent outfit and just being crazy. I don't think I gotta do that, but I do wonder is Terry Crews gonna be like a player character or just a an, an, uh, secondary NPC? Like, the. Like he's gonna be the chief, maybe that could be that could be funny. <laughs> the Terry Crews, chief of the agency. I mean, they'd have to get rid of the original voice, which, yeah, you know, actually, I doubt that the original voice of the agency, the uh, the the boss, basically, his voice is kind of so iconic. You just, you can't have it without him. But Terry Crews, <laughs> oh well, yeah. Also, they showed uh, the new a new Metro game, Metro Exodus. I still have not played the original uh, the two Metro games. They're on my list. This, oh my god, it looked beautiful. Especially when we went outside and we removed our mask. Now, the graphic, uh, from what I tell, from what I, from what I know, that was gameplay. They just removed all the UI, the HUD element, and the and the like quick. Quick time prompts, just to make it a lot more cinematic. But wow, wow! Although I think I believe that was alpha gameplay, so you, you never know with alpha gameplay. They it tends the, the alpha looks a lot better than the end result all the time. And this is especially true when you look at gameplay footage of Assassin's Creed Origins. Oh, wow. Okay, I'm surprised, though. I could... I am really surprised. I thought it was going to be first unveiled in Ubisoft's conference, but no, no. They unveiled this at the Microsoft. And it looks incredible. Ancient Egypt. 
just looks so vibrant. It, I never imagined it to be so beautiful. It does have me question something. I mean, people always, like, joked about the uh, ego vision and how silly it looked. I, I remember that. Uh, yeah, this guy is actually looking through the eyes of his freaking, like, pet eagle. Pet eagle. And, like, how can he see what the eagle sees? That's... They call eagle vision stupid? No, no, no. That's freaking stupid. But you know what? I don't care. I'm... I can't wait to see... What the explanation is as to how that's possible. You know, I mean, it, it looks cool and all. It's going to be the birth, the origin of the Assassin Brotherhood. Which really, like, <laughs> questions history there. <laughs> I know it's I know it's not history, but, you know, when the Assassins were around in Masyaf, now we learn that they originated in ancient Egypt. It's going to be interesting. Because I know so much about... Assassin's Creed lore where technically Adam and Eve were the founders. I don't know. So it's going to be great to see the lore there. Oh my god, yes. Oh, they also released some, um, uh, they gave us a release date for Cuphead, you know, September. And I, oh, of course, they, they had to touch upon the freaking sports game Forza 7, whatever. People are going to have the idea of that. Happy about that, me, not so much. Another game, of course, for the pirate fans, we got Sea of Thieves. We're talking about a very nice looking game and everything. Uh, definitely a good co op game. Mm, I'm not sure I'm gonna play that game actually, but it looks like a fun little romp with friends and everything. Just being silly pirates. We're fighting, fighting treasure, fighting skeletal, skeleton NPCs. And finding other players who will try to take your ship or sink you and stuff like that. <laughs> oh. So, it's cool. It's cool. Oh, but surprise, surprise. EA, they showed us a teaser for Anthem. And now we get freaking gameplay? <laughs> they, okay, I didn't, I actually, I actually expected to be, have just a tease. They wouldn't actually have, like, gameplay already to show. Microsoft, they have gameplay to show. And my god. Oh, wow, wow, wow. I played, like, uh, the movie tie-in game of Iron Man for the PS3. This game, Anthem, is basically what Iron Man should have been no more. You're fighting in a freaking power armor. You can fly. Oh, wow. You got guns, killing shit. It's like... Oh, who, 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 what? All the different freaking power armors. Um, yeah, this is, it's like Iron Man, all right, and I can't wait. It looks so cool. You you get so many uh, so many feels here. Yeah, people say Destiny, the whole behind the wall thing makes me, makes me think Attack on Titan. Oh, uh, we we've got a, like obviously I feel a lot of Mass Effect. Oh wow, it's just it's so much. It's just so much, and it looks so. Effing cool. Oh boy. Alright, so I'm just trying to remember here what else they've shown because oh wow, just so much I just easily for easily forget a lot of stuff. Um Ah damn, I gotta got go back and watch plus watch uh the conference here. Let's see, uh yeah, we got the Scorpio that was cool, we got well, yeah, oh yeah, yeah, a nice little game that interests me here was, I'm, I'm, it's, it's clearly on, it's a Xbox One console launch exclusive, so this is going to be something for the Xbox One X, and I'm assuming it's, um, like, Xbox Live game thing, arcade, but it's basically where you're a bunch of dwarves mining and having guns and fighting, okay. That looks cool. The, yeah, we got State of the K2 here. They talk about Minecraft. Oh, here's what I'm interested in here. Uh, Black Desert. I've heard about this MMO. MMO. And I've and it was coming to the freaking consoles. I'm very interested to, into this with this one because I really, really want to try out the character customization because... Oh wow! I've seen images of character customization of black a black desert. Wow! Just the level of detail they can 
go at is amazing. And I really want to experiment, see what kind of people I can make and everything. Just just for that, actually. Just, 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 for, just for that. Uh, it's it's amazing. They, of course, they show some more, like, uh, Code VN, which is anime Dark Souls, which I will get. I will get, because anime, you put anime on anything, and instantly I'm hooked. Because I'm that fucking simple. Uh, let's see here. They, yeah, the, uh... What the fuck? Okay, yeah, the third cruise. I'm going through the video here. We got, yeah, they just, after that, they just start bombarding us with new trailers. Yeah, they showed up. Lord of the Rings. Not really interested in Lord of the Rings, people. I'm sorry. You know, I know fans will love it, but not my thing. Oh, yes. Ori 2. Ori and the Will of the Wisp. I've got to play the first game first, but my god, it looked beautiful back then, and oh, that, that, that trailer. That trailer with the end where Ori's little, like, uh, surrogate father, or doesn't father, just passes away. It's like, oh, God, wait, wait a minute in the field with just vi visuals and music alone. That was incredible. Oh, there's also another game about uh, Super Lucky, Super Lucky Fox or something like Super Lucky Tales, something like that. We go to got the Darwin Project, which reminds me a lot of like uh, uh, Borderlands and even Battleborn, which I have not played. Battleborn, I do want to get that game. All in all, though, freaking Microsoft, they were they went to this trying to prove themselves. Here, show that they can do all this stuff. Like, it just went games after games after games after games. I'm still curious about which ones were ex truly exclusive. I know Cuphead is an exclusive, but it's also on Windows 10. I'm looking through, oh, we have Grinnell Crackdown is an exclusive. I'm looking at here. Oh, apparently State, State of the K2 is an exclusive as well. That's cool, but... Games like Anthem, games like Metro Exodus, they're not going to be exclusives. Those, those are big AAA games. Assassin's Creed Origins is not going to be exclusive because I swear, if it wasn't exclusive, I'd be pissed. Because I'm I'm loyal to Assassin's Creed on Sony consoles. I, that's how I played for the first game and every other game since then. I don't want to switch. But yeah, Sea of Thieves, not an exclusive either. So, yeah, it's like they only got a small handful of exclusives. That's what they really had to show. Really, like, show the exclusives. And I don't feel they had that many. I would have just loved, loved to have seen something about Halo. I mean, they did not show the expansion of Halo Wars 2 on the press conference, but God Damn, they would have really got more out of me if they showed either that or, surprise, surprise, we're making Halo 3 Anniversary. Which, you know, we, we, we've been lying to you. We're making Halo 3 Anniversary, okay? I would have loved to have seen that. But they didn't, they, they didn't really. It's like... I can't... I mean, right now, when I, when I saw this... Microsoft was in the lead at Best Conference. It even beat Sony, in my opinion. Until Nintendo, which I'll get into in a moment. In, like, the next video, part two. They did a pretty good, pretty good right here. I still say $500 for the Xbox Scorpio. No. No, no one's gonna buy that day one. I didn't buy my... Freaking Xbox One day one. I waited until like it was like 300 bucks or something like that. I waited for like the holiday sale basically when it was way, way down in price. And I'm happy with it. I'm, but yeah, yeah. I'm moving on to the next one, part three. This is Bethesda's press conference. By far, at this point in the press conference, it was, in my opinion, the most fun in a way. I mean, they opened up the, tr the, the press conference with. These kids, which are the kids of the developers and of Bethesda, which they were, and it's supposed to be like, uh, they said what their parents did, and then we go cut to their parents, and they 
Say their moments of like they played games when they were kids, like uh, freaking Dune, those old computer games, and the NES games, and from there they went on to actually make the games. It's not that dope, that nice the story to learn and everything. It's very cute, very cute. And of course they had the whole Bethesda Land, which was again, it's like <laughs> I kind of I can see Bethesda Land being a VR experience here, just. Make it happen, Vesta. Make Bethesda land like an actual VR experience here. You can just go there. But I, I would go, if you actually open a theme park, I would go there and enjoy it. However, Bethesda, I gotta admit, while they were the fun one, they didn't have enough. I mean, all they, did, they mostly talk about, let's see, they talked about a new uh, Doom VFR. Which is, uh, can be considered a side story to the Doom 2016 game, which I played, I enjoyed the hell out of. It's basically, you're not the Doom Slayer, or you're not the Doom Marine or anything like that, or the Doom Slayer, how would how, how you say it? You're someone else who was fighting the demons during the whole invasion thing, and it's a short campaign from what I hear. Very short. They all talk about like uh, Fallout 4 VR and Skyrim VR, which they've done before in last year. They also talk about how they continuously support the com the uh, modding community with a uh, community club, which cool, cool. I mean, make it so these mods are easier to install. Because I'm playing a uh, Fallout 4 on the PS4. I stopped playing a while ago, but I very much want to try many of these mods um Fallout 4 especially the settlement building mods because god damn it's it's very difficult building a settlement it's, it's oh boy and I would push like to move I put I would like to move the chair where that um old lady the psych the, the supposed psychic lady is sitting because I I put her in a bad spot and now I want to move her more Inside the the boundaries of my uh, settlement, but yeah, I like to be able to do that. <laughs> Just saying. But other than that, it's like okay, that's nice. I mean, and of course, we've got the DLC for Dishonored Two, starring uh, that. Well, that in the first game, he was a guy who murdered the Empress. He's back here. I haven't played the first game. I mean, the the second game yet. So, I don't know if he's in that game or not, but wow. Wow, it's, it's nice to see him again. And he's gonna try to kill the Outsider. That is interesting. I gotta say, it's like, um... Bethesda, you... You were really being weak to me. I mean, they, they got Quake and everything, yada yada, but... And they try to end it with a bang here, people. But they announced... Two new games! Well, not new. They were freaking sequels. But sequels are damn good games here. First of all, we have a sequel to The Evil Within. The Evil Within 2. I play the game. Did not beat the DLC story mission with the uh, woman, with the female who was a double agent or whatever. Gotta beat that. But basically, he's got to return back to that crazy mindscape to save his daughter? Didn't his daughter die in like a fire or something like that? And when you tell me she's alive, it's, uh, I'm confused. But hey, playing The Evil Within, it's coming out Friday the 13th. That's a, that's a thing I can, good thing I can say about the Bethesda's conference here. All that they showed here, the games, the DLC, the freaking whatever, it all comes out this year. That is cool. All everything, and of course, biggest oh, the closer they had, the the one that shocked me the most. How is it possible? How can he still be alive? In the last game, he was freaking like torn up, like badly hurt by a by an old school grenade, and then if it's a freaking castle or fortress of Death's Head blew up by a nuke, and yet somehow. B.J. Blazkowicz survived to be in this game, Wolfenstein 2, The New Colossus. Granted, 
he didn't survive intact. I mean, when we first see him, he's in a hospital bed. He can't really walk. He's in a wheelchair, which is a good thing that we, you know, we got that cool ass uh, power armor suit from the Ya Yadral whatever. So yeah. That's gonna be awesome, cause that suit, but when Caroline had that suit, oh wow. Now when BJ Blaskowitz had that I can just imagine right right now, I'd be fucking immortal. And you know what? I got no problem with that if they if Nazis can't kill me. Nothing they've got can kill me, I just I'm immortal, I'm but I'm killing Nazis like crazy. I'm not gonna complain. I'm killing fucking Nazis. With, and they can't hurt me. They're a bunch of little weakling pussies. Yes. Yes, I'm gonna enjoy that. I wanna be able to like grab a Nazi's head and tear it out of its fucking... <laughs> Make it happen, baby. Make it happen. But yeah, Wolfenstein, we got... We basically go to America and wow, when we... See what America's life under the Nazi regime, and we some freaking like Klansmen in public. All these freaking they had all these they went with these commercials, a game show called German or or else. Fuck! <laughs> wow. Okay, so basically, yeah, BJ he's got twins on the way. And he doesn't want them to grow up in an America run by a bunch of fascist assholes. Which I can re I can understand that. Oh boy. So yeah. It's going to be fun just going back, killing Nazis. Seeing some crazy shit here. Like we saw the guy tripping tripping on acid. Uh, we. It, it's going to be fun. Oh, It's going to be fun, people. Uh, I. That, that, that's what I can say. Bethesda here at the conference, it was fun. And they open and they closed it fun. It's still not enough to save it, sadly. It's it's just I rank it like I don't know. I I have to because of the end of it. It's a tie between EA and Bethesda on who has the spot, but they're in the low category. Microsoft pretty high there. <sighs> well, people. I thank you for watching this part one of my thoughts on the Bethesda, Bethesda Conf Bethesda Conference. What what the hell am I saying? The E3 press conferences. I am so bad talking. So bad. Join me for part two where I discuss Ubisoft, Sony, and Nintendo's little uh, treehouse spotlight event. Which my god, that I'm surprised by that by that one. So people Tell me all what you all love about the conferences. Uh, just these three here, people. We'll talk about the other three next video, like I said. Tell me all Anthem, say the K. What do you think of A Way Out? What freaking Wolfenstein 2? I mean, do you like the fact, the fact that you will be completely invulnerable Nazi killing machine? I mean, I'm sure they won't do it like that, but I want it to be like that. Just, I don't want to be able to die. And just, I just want to, like, walk through Nazi fires like, <laughs> you, you suck. You all suck. I, I'm bulletproof, baby. I mean, you guys can hurt me. I want to be able to do that. Comment down below. Tell me your thoughts. Like and subscribe for more videos. Until tomorrow, this is Mekasan logging out.